Hello marching band flutes! Welcome to day two of online sectionals. Today we'll be going over the second half of the Captain America march from measures 23 to the end. So during the first part we've been kind of echoing the melody. As the band would play the melody we would play an echo and that's going to continue during the second half. At measure 23, while we have three measures of rest, the rest of the band is starting up a new melody. So four measures after 24 we'll have a new echo that we're going to play. So this one will start on the second half of the first beat and sound like this. And the next ones after two measures of rest will sound similar. So these are just going to be echoes of the melody. And the trill right before measure 31 is going to be a trill of the high F. So if you play regular high F, but then you move your thumb from this key over to this key, then you'll play the trill just by moving your thumb on this first key right here. So the trill will sound like this. And that's how you're going to play the trill. And at measure 31, the flutes actually get to play the melody now. And while the key does stay in the key of B flat, all the A's and D's are going to be flat for the next couple measures from 31 to 38 essentially putting it into the key of A flat, even though it's not written. So be sure to watch all of the D's and A's as they're going to be flat for the next couple measures. So here's what the melody is going to sound like. So now at measure 38, after we've just played this huge buildup, it's going to change to now kind of a backup to the melody. It's going to be an interesting rhythm. So the eighth notes here at the beginning are actually on the first part of the beat. So they're going to sound like super staccato quarter notes like we had earlier in measure 15. So the first couple go dun dun and the third one is going to be on the second half of the third beat and the fourth one's gonna be on the first half of the fourth beat. So it's gonna sound like this. And then the next measure will be very similar, starting out with the same, the first three beats being the same. And the last one, instead of being just a single eighth note, it's gonna be two sixteenth notes in an eighth note. So it'll sound like this. So when you put those two measures together, And then that's going to repeat again for the next two measures. And then it's just going to change notes and stay at the same rhythm. And then two half notes. And now we have an interesting trill right before measure 47. So this trill is going to start on A natural. But you'll see there's a natural sign next to the trill which means that instead of going to B flat like a trill there normally would, it's going to be B natural. So you'll just move this finger up and down. So trill from A natural to B natural. And now at 47, we have a new backup rhythm, which is just going to be from B flat to C. And if you watched the last video, you saw I showed you an alternate fingering for B flat, move playing just like normal, but moving your thumb from here to here and now you don't need this finger. So that's going to work very well for the rhythm at 47 because now to change from B flat to C, all you have to do is move this thumb right to this. So that's how you're going to play the rhythm there at 47 as well. So two sixteenth notes and an eighth note. So each beat, one, two, three, four. Da-yum, 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 da-yum. Just like that. And there's a staccato on the last note of each beat that just means to cut it short. Don't be playing them long. Play them really short. And that'll make it sound a little bit more sharp as a good march. And then after that, um, this part is going to look really familiar from around measure 15. So that's the same rhythm and same glissando that we had during the first part.
The only difference is right before the glissando on the B flats, there's only one beat of rest, whereas right before measure 23, there were two beats. So be careful there with counting. And then at measure 55, it goes back to being the same as the beginning. And now here at the end, um, we go back to having the melody for another two beats. And we have G flat, which is going to be F sharp. And then it's not written every time, but it is going to be G flat every time. So this last couple measures are going to sound like this. And that's going to be really hard to finger. It's going to be wanting to tie your fingers up. So if you play F sharp like normal, and then E flat like normal, you can actually play F natural by just lifting up this finger instead of both. So then you don't have to switch these fingers between F and F sharp or G flat. So then you'll just play the passage G flat, E flat, F, um, G flat, E flat, F, G flat. So you just have to move these two fingers. So if you play G flat and then E flat like normal, then F natural can actually be played with this finger up. So instead of normal F natural, you'll put this finger down as well. So then when you're playing this passage, it's just G flat, E flat, F, G flat, E flat, F, G flat. So you only have to move these two fingers. That'll make the fingering a little bit easier. And after those notes, you'll notice that the whole note has a weird dynamic marking. So an F and then a P and a crescendo to two Fs. So that means you'll attack the note really hard and then immediately back off and get really loud to the next note. So it'll sound kind of like this. So that's how you're going to play that dynamic. And we're actually not playing the very last note there in the piece. So we'll end at the note with two Fs under it. And now I'll play the second part of Captain America March from 23 to the end with the recording from J.W. Pepper so you can hear how it's supposed to sound with the rest of the band.